uh, we uh, are going to uh, first have a little information about the partnership itself, uh, followed by uh, information about the call, uh, where we'll then learn about the knowledge community and impact uh, exploration, exploitation, uh, followed by uh, an overview of all the different calls modules modules uh, for this year's call. There'll be a, a short uh, coffee break in between before we continue on with the rest of the call of the modules. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so uh, we'll also look at how you can navigate the submission portal uh, as well as uh, getting connected to our community uh, for, uh, potential matchmaking. Uh, then there'll be a question and answer session, uh, as well as, uh, uh, uh a possibility for, uh, a national question and answer session. Before we have the closing remarks, and we sh should be finishing up around 1 o'clock. So that going set, let's go on to the next, um, the partnership. So what is the clean energy partnership? Uh, essentially, it is a multilateral strategic partnership between national and regional research, development, and innovation programs in the EU, EEA member states, and also outside of those states. Uh, uh, if you go to the next point, uh, essentially, uh, we are a partnership that is um, supports and is aligned with the European Strategic Energy Technology Plan, the SET plan, as it's called. And the, the objectives, of course, of the SEP plan are to achieve climate neutral, a climate neutral society by 2025 or 2050, sorry, uh, diversify Europe's energy supplies uh, and strengthen the Europe uh, clean energy value chains and make uh, them more sustainable, essentially. So if you go to the last point, uh, we leverage uh, the SEP plan initiative uh, to align them with the national energy climate uh, plans and recovery and resilience facility, essentially. And we do that by consolidating the R and D funding uh, for national energy source uh, transition projects, essentially. And the the goal here, um, the the national, regional, and agencies as well, as well as the European Commission, is to have an industry-led transition, making Europe uh, a leader in clean energy innovation and implementation. Go to the next slide. Uh, so it's a quite a large partnership. We have uh, over like 15 national and regional RTDI program owners, the funding agencies that that, um, uh, that are partners in this this um, partnership, and it's over 30 European and non-European countries uh, that are are funding these projects. Uh, we pool our our resources together uh, to have joint calls. So these calls come annually. Next slide. Uh, so essentially what the focus of the partnership is, is to empower and clean energy transition with the goal of becoming climate neutral by 2050. Uh, and we do it by fund by pooling the national funding, national and regional funding for a broad variety of uh, energy uh, related uh, solutions, essentially. So if we go to the next slide, um, here you can see a, a picture essentially of, of where uh, uh, where you can apply with uh, the different countries, some of the different countries where funding is available. Uh, and for the, the 2024 call, we have approximately 100 million euros total uh, for this year's call. If we go to the next slide. Uh, and what you can apply, the different modules that we have in this call, uh, well, you'll be learning about uh, more in this information session. Uh, but essentially, we have different thematic focuses, uh, what should we call uh, a TRI, uh, so a thematic configuration. And there are seven of these different um, TRIs. Uh, and, and I will uh, allow these uh, in the call modules, so you'll be learning about each of the different focuses, essentially. Um, let's go to the next slide. So, with that being said, I think we'll start learning a little bit about this. Uh, Yoko, are you, yes. you are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob Monk. I work for the Nordic Energy Research. We are uh, the 
we call management team leaders. So we are uh, responsible to put together the calls and evaluate all the proposals that come in uh, as well. So just to give you an introduction to our annual joint calls. So as uh, Christina just told you, we have these seven TIs, uh, thematic areas that we are working with in the CTP. These uh, TIs are then responsible to do scoping within each of their themes every year and then define uh, annual call modules. Then our uh, funding partners decide which call modules they want to participate in. Here it's important for all of you to note that not all funding partners participate in all call modules. We will show you later where you can find the information. It is available in the call text. It also says in the national requirements which call modules that each funding partners participate in. But please be aware of this when, when you're applying so you don't apply with a funding partner that do not uh, fund uh, a specific call module that you want to apply in. Yes, next slide, please. So how it works. So we have a two-step procedure. So first we have a pre-proposal followed by an invitation to submit a full proposal. This means that you're not able to submit a full proposal unless you have been invited by us uh, from the pre-proposal base. So you cannot only hand in the full proposal, you need to hand in the pre-proposal as well. At both stages, we will do eligibility checks, both according to our general eligibility criteria, but also according to the national and regional requirements. So each national and regional funding agencies will have their own uh, requirements. So this is also different funding rates and so forth. You can find all this information in the national requirements section of the call text. If you have any questions to this, you need to contact the funding agencies directly. If you are in doubt of anything, rather contact them one too many times than one too few, because you risk uh, of getting an ineligible uh, uh, check, and we don't want that for any of you. With all the eligible uh, proposals that we have, at both proposals we have three experts, independent experts that evaluate the proposals uh, they rank uh, the projects between uh, zero and five on three uh, criteria we have set up, so implementation, excellence, uh, and so forth. Each call module has their own ranking list, which means that one call module might be having uh, projects that passes with a lower score than a different call module. So you also need to be aware of this. This also affects the success rate of the core modules. However, we do aim to uh, find a solution where all core modules have an even uh, success rate. However, this is not always possible. Next slide, please. Yes, so just to go through the two uh, proposals. So the pre-proposal is a light form. So it's only, only 10 pages you need to hand in. So this includes the project description, consortium partners data, team members, and project budget. So this is mainly focused on seeing, is there innovation in your project? Is it possible to implement it? But also, are you even eligible? So do you have the necessary uh, participants in your consortium? And are they eligible according to the national and regional? Uh, uh, requirements. At the full proposal stage, you have a much bigger uh, application. So it's a 30 page application you have to hand in here. What you need to know is that it may not differ substantially from the pre proposal. So you cannot change the overall theme and approach of, uh, from the pre proposal to the full proposal. You, yeah. Uh, all the changes must be communicated uh, to involve all the project partners and, of course, if there are some uh, changes that are uh, quite on the, on the borderline of being uh, big, then you need to also contact the relevant funding partners uh, that you have applied for funding with. If you have any questions regarding all of the, this, you need to contact the call management. We will be able to answer all your questions regarding the general uh, call text. Uh, Questions. Next slide, please. So, yeah, what you need to do is you need to choose one call module per proposal. This means that if you have a proposal that is between, oh, sorry, now my light turned off, sitting too still here. Um, 
if you have uh, a project that might fall between two chairs, so between two call modules, you need to contact both of the TIs that are responsible for those call modules and uh, talk to them to find out where does your proposal fit the best. Yeah. It is the responsibility, oh, sorry, let's go back. So it's the responsibility of the project coordinator to invite the project partners through to the submission system. We recommend you to do this quite early in the process because we have seen in previous years that the, the project coordinator has been writing all of the project and then just wanting to get the funding part or the partners in uh, last minute so they can just enter in their information. But somehow it always ends up going wrong for at least two uh, uh, people uh, involved and therefore they do not manage to, to get themselves in as partners in time. So please do this early on in the process. Furthermore, it is uh, required that each organization applying for funding has a PIC or NAC code uh, uh, that you have to put into to our submission platform. Next slide, please. Yes, then for the eligibility criteria. So each proposal must include at least three independent legal entities from at least three different countries that are participating in the CTP joint call 2025. Of these three, at least two of them must be from an EU uh, member state or Horizon Europe associated country. So this means that you cannot have uh, two uh, self-finance partners and only one person that, or one organization that apply for funding. You need to have at least three. Applicants must be eligible for funding according to their funding partners' national uh, and regional requirements. At the pre-proposal stage, if the only two are uh, eligible, we can still allow the project to move forward to the full proposal if the evaluators deem that the proposal uh, is, has a passing score despite this partner not being eligible. This will be the same at the full proposal. However, at the full proposal, there still needs to be three independent legal entities from three different countries. So if a fourth partner is ineligible and the experts deem that the project is still uh, liable uh, and that the task of the ineligible fourth partner can be moved without any risk to the three other partners, then the project can still get a passing score. Next slide, please. Yes, so here's a little bit more about uh, the eligibility criteria. What we also aim to have is uh, quite uh, diverse uh, consortiums, so public research organization, universities, higher education, but we also need to have the need owners and relevant stakeholders involved in the projects, as well as local and regional authorities, depending, of course, on what your project aims to, to address. The total effort of one partner cannot exceed 60% of the total project efforts. This is measured in personal months, not in the factual budget, but in personal months. Furthermore, total effort of partners from one country or region cannot exceed 75% of the total project efforts, again, measured in personal months. Each uh, project has one project coordinator. This project coordinator has to be eligible. If this project coordinator is deemed ineligible, the whole uh, pro uh, proposal will be deemed ineligible. Furthermore, it's not possible to change the project coordinator between the pre and full proposal. And the project coordinator needs to be uh, uh, from a funding partner, uh, so they need to apply for funding with a funding partner, so they cannot be self-financed. Yes, uh, next slide, please. So here you have an, uh, a little bit of an overview of how this can look like. So you have uh, three different countries, but you have four partners. So here you can see one partner, the coordinator from Portugal, who are applying for funding from the Portuguese funding agency. Then you have uh, two partners from France who are applying for funding from the French uh, funding agency and so forth. So you need to have at least three countries like this. Of course, you can be more. What we always encourage is that you have more than three because then if one is in eligible, that you still have the possibility to, to uh, move forward. Uh, yeah. And of course, self-finance partners can always uh, join the project as well. 
So it is uh, the responsibility of the funding agency and the partner to make individual grant agreements uh, and uh, arrange uh, reporting and payment schedules with the funding agencies they apply with uh, funding for. What we then ask is still for the funding partner or for the project partners to have a consortium agreement. Yes, uh, next slide, please. So here you have some of our dates. So first of all, we open our uh, submission platform for pre-proposal in one week. Uh, it closes on the 21st of November at uh, 2 Central European time. <clears throat> and then we uh, open uh, for full proposal for the invited uh, proposals on the 29th of January 2025. And we close the full proposal submission on the 31st of March 2025 at 2 Central European time. We aim to have a funding decision communicated to all the applicants by July 2025. With a tentative start of the project in September 2025, we allow this. Uh, this is a period, so between September to uh, mid December before Christmas, so 14th of December. You need to be aware that some. Uh, most of our national and regional funding agencies also require that you hand in a national or regional application. Most often it is uh, a copy paste of some of the information that you have provided already uh, in the CTP uh, general application. So you need to uh, be aware of this. You need to look into the national requirements, check if there is any national or regional uh, submission deadlines. Again, if you have any questions, contact the funding agencies. They are more than welcome to help you. Yes, and then I think that was it from my side. And then I think I will hand over directly to Ludwig uh, Krag and Tanya, who will uh, talk to you about uh, the networks within the CTP, so the knowledge community and impact network. Thank you very much, Jakob. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. So, good morning on behalf of our support teams. Ludwig and I are here to tell you about our impact monitoring and knowledge functions uh, with, with which we aim to support your projects. Next slide, please. Next slide. So, here you can see a schematic of our teams. We all work together to support your projects, trying to add real value to your research and helping you make a bigger impact, impact faster. And now we'll give you a quick rundown of the services we provide and the ways you can benefit from them. Next slide, please. Well, that's my turn. Uh, if you invite many projects and many partners to collaborate, you better have some IT platform and this is what we have. This is our Disco platform. Disco platform is being used by the management bodies that's on the left side, but on the right side, you see project collaborators, project leaders, knowledge community, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever we are going to tell you here and for whatever we are going to invite you for will be implemented on this state of the art platform. Go to the next slide, please. Any Thank you. To monitoring for Tanya. Thank you very much. Um, briefly about monitoring. Next slide, please. So we have a system place for monitoring and reporting and the aim for the whole initiative for the whole partnership is that we can track the progress of the funded transnational projects. So of, of the whole portfolio of projects, and we aim to collect and assess the innovations and solutions in this project portfolio so that we can track how well we are actually addressing the challenges that are outlined in our calls. So that's for the whole initiative. Now for you, we offer you a well-structured online system that's interactive, as easy as possible for you. And the input you provide is used to support your own project development. And for that, we offer, for instance, peer-to-peer -peer feedback in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, meetings where the projects actually talk to each other about their progress. So that's something that has been um, uh, met with uh, with, with a lot of um, uh, positive feedback. And also you'll get support for creating your impact depending on your own impact goals and your own impact needs. Next slide, please. So how does that work? We are talking about knowledge first. Uh, our intention, and you can go to the next slide, is to build a knowledge community. Uh, as Tanya said it in the beginning, we are 
not only a set of projects. We would like you and we would support you to collaborate to come to the best ever solutions and also to create uh, communities for further collaboration. Uh, we provide you this collaborative space on the Disco platform so you can meet each other, but we are also going to guide you with workshops, etc. I will explain it in a bit. Uh, what Tanya mentioned is that in the in the reporting phase, uh, our reporting phase, our reporting is a bit more than just collecting administrative data. We also collect what you have found in your projects. We digest that. We feed it into the knowledge community platform, and we invite you projects for peer to peer, either peer to peer feedback from us or some experts we invite or mostly peer-to-peer -peer feedback from your sister and, and brother projects. Uh, that means also that from time to time we find a, a topic, which we call maybe critical or important, and then we will invite the right projects to discuss that and digest that in detail. Uh, we also derive knowledge, uh, joint knowledge from our projects and can then help you uh, to create impact with, you, with your knowledge. Above all, what you would what you would like to do is uh, creating a, a community of trust and respect. So, I sometimes call it the family of projects. If we go on, I give you some examples how that works. Uh, from some time to time, uh, we invite you to present your results in webinars. This has happened uh, last year, uh, led by our colleague Michele De Nigris, he will show up in a minute, uh, webinars on, uh, in this case, DC technologies for power networks or something. So we select something and then invite you to present it. If you go to the next slide, uh, I'm not going to explain everything to you. I'm just saying you will have, I mean, you will be selected and I, I wish it for you. You will be selected for a kickoff event where we explain all the formats that we can provide to you, all the benefits that we can provide to you, and we will give you an introduction to this this platform. And uh, guys, we know how to create good pictures. I made them blur uh, because this is a real picture, and I'm, I'm saying here that uh, in some cases we make you meet, but we always respect IPR and GDPR. So we do not post everything in social media that you guys uh, discuss in your peer-to-peer -peer meetings, okay? But we will invite you, we'll structure it, and we will help you. Let's go on. The benefits, as I said, peer-to-peer -peer feedback, interaction among the projects, and also projects in other programs, joint creation of knowledge in various types of working groups, also cross-cutting working groups, and of course, you get ideas and partners for future goals. That's also interesting. Next slide, and I turn to Tanya. Thank you very much. Now, finally, uh, uh, about impact. So, next slide, please. This slide shows a schematic of the journey of an innovation from lab to market and to real world application. Now, while our projects and support measures typically focus on the pre commercial phase, we do provide assistance to help you prepare for the entire journey from early research to market uptake. The right hand side of this image is very, very competitive and uh, you have a better chance if you are well prepared. So, typical stages in this journey include research, validation, demonstration, team building for commercialization and technology transfer. And along the way, you'll engage with key stakeholders like investors, policymakers, and need owners. And this pathway here is about getting your innovations out of the lab and into real world use, but there are many ways to create impact. And we want to emphasize that we always start from your own needs. They can be through commercialization or they can be through influencing policy and societal adoption. But typically they all involve engaging with different types of stakeholders. For that, CTP offers support along the way. 
We offer matchmaking opportunities. We offer peer-to-peer -peer, uh, support, like Ludwig mentioned. We connect you with partners who can help validate and scale up your solutions. We organize events to showcase your research to investors, policymakers, and other key stakeholders. And these events and these stakeholders can boost your project's visibility and support its next steps. You also have access to our library. Next slide, please. A library of stakeholder engagement tools, which you can use to enhance your outreach and to ensure your innovations meet market and societal needs. Now, this impact library is evolving. It'll be open by the end of this year, but it will evolve throughout the duration of this partnership. And we are developing it based on the experiences that you have in your events, in your own outreach. So this impact library serves as a resource for the projects and the TRIs that are looking for useful methodologies and ways to work successfully with different types of stakeholders and different types of uh, impact aims. And it's going to be, and partly already is, a collection of instructional videos, guidelines, workshop concepts and best practice stories to help you and your stakeholders get the most out of your collaboration. Next slide, please. Finally, the benefits for you of our impact and exploitation activities. We hope we can support you achieve your own impact goals through, for instance, tailored exploitation strategies and expanding your networks through matchmaking events and other types of impact events. We hope, hope to offer you guidance on market readiness and um, on ensuring societal acceptance for sustainable innovations. And finally, we hope to support you advance research maturity to secure future funding for your innovations and commercial success. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And now, uh, floor to Ludwig yeah, for final we've words. Been, we have been presenting you offerings. We will present that from the beginning of your project, but this is only an invitation. It's upon you to take that invitation to see the benefits and to join the knowledge community and the impact generation network. But uh, you have to be a bit uh, careful because if there is no capacity and no budget to participate in these events, uh, activities, etc., you are lost. So maybe you want to read the appendix of the call text. It describes more or less in detail the offerings that we made, um, and you decide if you put aside some budget, put aside some person days, person months and decide which partner in the consortium should most probably participate in these collective or collaborative activities. We, Tanya, uh, we would like to have you there. Open your minds for that targeted collaboration. Check what you can do. If you prepare, you will be able to have budget. You will have person months to participate. Please foresee the capacities for the knowledge community and impact network. That's our invitation. That's our proposal. Come and meet us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, then I think I will jump back. Uh, yeah, there we go. So thank you, Ludwig and Sanja. So as you can hear, uh, the CCP, uh, we are much more than just our call modules and our funding, our knowledge community and impact is uh, one of the things that we strive ourselves for and we will really want you to participate in. So thank you, Ludwig and Sanja, for giving an introduction. So now that we are going a little bit back to the joint call 2024 specifically, I just wanted to uh, remind you that you can find uh, the information about which call modules each funding uh, agencies participate in on our website. So as you can see here on this slide, if you go on the joint call 2024 and then click on funding agencies and call modules, you can see which call module each funding agencies participate in. And if you want to cheat a little bit with finding each of the national requirements, you can just click the names of the funding agencies, and then you will also get the national requirements for those funding agencies. This also makes it a little bit easier for each of the coordinators to have an overview of who to participate and what potentially is the uh, national requirements of those uh, funding agencies they want to uh, invite partners to from. 
And then I will give the word back to Christina for the next slide. Thank you, everybody, and uh, I will see you in the Q&A section. Great. Thank you so much, Jakob, and Ludwig and Tanya as well. That was very interesting to hear every, all the background on that. Now, I just wanted to, before we go into the next part, I would like to just remind everyone, please, if you do have questions, enter the Slido website and submit your questions, because we would very much like to take it at the Q&A at the end of this session. Uh, so the next uh, next uh, part of this uh, event will be focused on the different call modules. Uh, that's it. I would like to now welcome to the stage Michaela Deningers to introduce our first call module. Michaela. Very good day, and uh, thank you for calling me to uh, introduce you to the call module number one on data spaces and interoperability. This call module has been uh, uh, prepared by the transition initiative number one together with the transition initiative number five and uh, uh, it comes uh, in line with the different uh, uh, call modules that were organized and proposed uh, during the last years we have started with tools and methods flexibility direct current technologies and nowadays we look at the digitalization of the energy system. So if we can go to the next slide, uh, uh, we are looking at uh, data spaces, which is part of the digitalization of the energy system. Data spaces, as you know, are everywhere, uh, all over the energy system. They are fundamental for the functionality, for the functioning of each of the different pieces of the energy system. For example, network data is absolutely essential for the functioning of the power system, but very often they are not always interoperable, both inside the sector. For example, think about some difficulties that may appear between the TSO and the distribution system operator, but they are very often not interoperable among the different sectors. Think, for example, uh, of the uh, uh, opportunities, of the missed opportunities of linking data spaces from uh, different sectors, for example, electric vehicle charging and the power system, and we will look at that. Uh, and, uh, for example, the gas system with respect to the uh, electricity systems. And very often, they are not interoperable among the different member states of, uh, of Europe, for example. This is exactly why we propose this core module. And if you go to the next slide, you see what we are proposing. We are proposing essentially to develop a kernel of an interoperable IT framework to allow an interoperable exchange of information among different data spaces cross sector, so uh, electricity, hydrogen, uh, built environment, uh, electric vehicles, charging, renewables, and so on but also multilateral, so which is valid across different countries, in order to enable uh, the development of an energy system integration from the local to the pan-European dimension. The awarded project will then need to develop a tested and validated, this is a software pilot, of an IT framework for the interoperable energy data spaces. We are not looking at the development of the data spaces themselves, because the data spaces themselves are already uh, being developed in other frameworks, each for, il, uh, uh, for uh, uh, each uh, um, uh, uh, specific system. What we want to do is to implement the reference models that brings together the different data modules then data spaces and framework. And in this framework, we want to enable interoperability by design. Next slide, please. So here, the duty is 
very, very important and uh, the impact uh, is potentially going to be extremely high because this is going to be, uh, if successful, the kernel of an IT framework at European level uh, that will uh, be modular enough to be then completed and complemented uh, by, uh, other, by other systems that will uh, link to, uh, uh, to this uh, IT, uh, uh, IT kernel. Um, what is, uh, uh, we could uh, 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 essentially start with uh, a, uh, a white page. In fact, we are giving you the possibility, we are giving you some initial idea about one of the potential use cases. And the potential use cases that we are offering is the EV charging infrastructure enabling the provision or request of ancillary services to and from the electricity network through data exchange and the interaction between energy and mobility. So you see here the first proposal, uh, this is only a proposal if you have different use cases, you can propose different use cases, is the capability of the EV charging infrastructure, this is one system, to offer or to request ancillary services from the electricity system and this is uh, the other system. Each of them have got their data spaces and uh, the uh, IT infrastructure shall make these uh, data spaces speak with one another in an interoperable way. This is a big, uh, this is a big issue and this is why we think that it is important uh, that even if uh, this project will start as a specific um, uh, as a specific uh, uh, application, uh, it will uh, give the possibility of being scalable, of being replicable, of being maintainable, so as to build up uh, an interoperable, uh, much bigger uh, infrastructure. So you start small, but take into consideration this is going to be uh, integrated into a much bigger uh, into a much bigger uh, picture. Next slide, please. And uh, the consortium. Uh, the idea here is that uh, we would finance as much as possible one project with a unique and very skillful and competent consortium. So this is now your moment to look for uh, the best consortium to be uh, uh, built up with all the uh, requested and the required characteristics in terms of knowledge, in terms of potential, in terms of uh, capabilities uh, in the, uh, uh, for the setting up of the proposal. Uh, there is a small uh, typo here, the TRL, the initial TRL may be three to five, and the final TRL may be uh, four to six. So uh, uh, we will, uh, uh, we will uh, correct this uh, into, the final, into the final version. As we said, this is going to be quite a big challenge, and uh, this is why we expect to have a bigger, pro uh, bigger projects with respect to the average that we have had up to now. So we plan to have a project budget around uh, 5 million euros. So this is going to be quite uh, an, important, an important aspect. The challenge here is going to be the matchmaking. So best uh, proposal come at the pre-proposal stage um, and uh, uh, that all the uh, required uh, uh, characteristics of the, uh, uh, of the consortium and uh, of the proposal be already somehow met at the pre-proposal stage. Of course, uh, at this stage, you must already have the right idea and uh, uh, already found the best uh, potential partners uh, to accompany you uh, to the successful uh, proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we will continue on to co-modules two and three uh, with the, the um, with Francesco Pesela. Uh, yes, I'm here. From Thank you, Thank you. Welcome. Great. Just please uh, respect the time limit as well. Just a short reminder, um, so we can schedule. Thank you.
Okay, now we will present the energy system flexibility, uh, the call module related to energy system flexibility, renewable production, storage, and system integration, um, which is a, a call module developed together with the Green Power Future Mission, so inside Mission Innovation Framework. Next slide, please. Um, the um, call module, uh, of course, is, bay, is uh, focused on energy system flexibility, and uh, it uh, faced the possibility of um, addressing this point by renewable production with different source, by storage or by system integration and distribution. The uh, joint call module focuses on three aspects. The idea is to have projects that can help in the reaching the 100% of renewable um, in the grid system, and so in the energy um, power production. And um, of course, it's also in, in important is the digitalization and standardization of um, the system that will be developed and the market consideration. As I said, the um, call module is completely um, developed in a very strict collaboration with the, with the Green Power Future Mission and in the Clean Energy Transition Partnership is uh, um, dealing with the transition initiatives one and two. So we developed together with Michele De Nigris that you have already uh, heard um, on the um, energy system uh, call module and uh, with the power production uh, TRI2 uh, call module. Uh, the next slide, please. Um, the uh, strict collaboration with the Green Power Future Mission is based on the identification of 14 um, innova innovation priorities that have been uh, selected by a task force in the uh, Green Power Future Mission as uh, the main enablers for the 100% um, development of uh, uh, renewable power production uh, energy system. And um, we have clusterized it in five. Uh, so please uh, go to the next slide. I will not go through the 14 uh, points in five big uh, cluster, uh, taking into account different topics. One is the large scale renewable generation and system stability and reliability. So how different uh, large scale renewable generation and even uh, coupling different renewable generation can address stability and reliability of the energy and power system. The energy, the second one is the energy storage technology and system uh, for flexibility services. So how to uh, improve and increase and develop energy storage technologies for the uh, increased flexibility service and for, for the system stability. The third one is the system stability and flexible operations, so all related to the grid system management. And the fourth is innovative flexibility source and demand side for flexibility market. So how the market and the demand side can increase the flexibility and the uh, reliability of the energy system. And finally, uh, the fifth one is that related to the system digitalization and related tools and technologies, including um, artificial intelligence and digital twin. The expected impact, of course, is demonstrating that power system uh, can effectively integrate up to 100% renewable energy. Uh, next slide, uh, please. Uh, just uh, to uh, mention the specific requirements, we are looking at projects that start at minimum at TRL3 and have one, two level increase of the project and at the project end. So um, um, we expect TRL5, for instance, uh, as a good uh, ending of the project. Uh, TRL and we look at consortium that, of course, include university and research organization, but also private company, system operator, SME, and spin-off. The project size indicative is 1, 2 million euro, but this depends on the dimension of the partnership, so you can actually uh, increase the total budget, uh, which is not prescriptive. Uh, that's for... Um, this is not uh, um, just to mention uh, the, um, there is no limit at the project uh, uh, financing that TRI. The only one that uh, look for one pro big project is the first call module. Uh, of course, the overall uh, number of project depends on the availability of uh, uh, money in the uh, agency that support and funds 
the uh, clean energy transition partnership, so uh, we cannot uh, uh, foresee uh, uh, the number of projects. I can tell you that uh, this year I've been financed with a similar uh, coal module uh, eight projects. So uh, we hope we can even increase the number of projects um, that um, will be financed under this coal module. Uh, next slide, please. I. Uh, so this is the coal module three, um, it's related to advanced renewable energy technologies for power production. So the focus here is on the technology itself, and we can go on the next slide. Uh, the um, coal module is actually a, 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 a encompassing two coal modules, the three A and three B, and the difference between three A and three B is the TRL. Uh, the three A is low TRL, so we saw with a research oriented action while the 3B is a uh, high TRL, so with um, innovation, innovation oriented action. In this case, the Colmodio seeks to fund project focusing on advanced renewable energy technologies for power production. And we target almost all technologies, bioenergy, concentrated solar power, photovoltaics, wind, ocean and offshore, as well as hybridization of technologies and integration with storage solution and among different technologies. Uh, the project are expected to meet specific set plan implementation uh, tar plan targets, um, for instance, cost efficiency, circularity and sustainability, of course, um, uh, aligned with the Uni Uni European Union strategies for transition to uh, a renewable based power system. Um, next slide, please. Uh, if we go uh, to the specific topic at the different, um, so um, considering different energy uh, power technology, we look for bioenergy for power generation, of course, high efficiency biomass cogeneration of power with improved performance and higher share of power production ratio into the integrated cogeneration system and also uh, using, uh, of course, residues and waste as feedstock. And this is very crucial. Um, um, we are looking for projects uh, that are also considering carbon capture and storage, so have negative carbon emission uh, for power production. The concentrated solar power and solar thermal energy um, technology will be um, addressing line focus and central receiver power plants, but also innovative concept cost effective transfer media, innovative high temperature thermal storage, digitalization, and um, also um, forecast of meteorological um, um, conditions. Ocean energy is, uh, the idea is to finance direct generation wave energy, also looking at the direct transfer of wave motion into electric city through the properties of electroactive mat uh, metamaterials and dry testing of power takeoff, also because the project is not very uh, big uh, usually, so um, probably it's not, uh, uh, the site is not suitable for uh, the uh, offshore tests, so also dry tests will be considered for, for funding. And um, and so optimization of the devices will be also uh, in the scope of the call. The cross-cutting offshore renewable technology will be also very important, critical technology for airways, um, applicable to multiple devices, mooring and foundations, um, taking into account integration um, of those technologies with biodiversity and sustainable aspects. Uh, due to the uh, blue uh, economy and seaside um, um, interaction, connection and coupling system, innovative solution to reduce cost of operation and maintenance will be also in the uh, scope of the call. And we can go to the next slide, um, the, uh, which of course uh, also take into account solar photovoltaics by considering advanced PV technologies, increased lifetime, reliability, and sustainability, increase efficiency and cost, develop the digitalization for operational maintenance, digital twins, predictive analytics, and a new application will be also a very interesting integration of PB uh, by agrovoltaics, I've been mentioned in the chat, landscape integration, floating, and integration of PB in the infrastructure, for instance, mobility infrastructure will be also very interesting for our for our um, 
scope. Wind energy, wind energy will be very, uh, of course, uh, very much uh, uh, in the scope of the of the call, and we are looking for next generation wind energy system, digital solution, and digital twins for turbine and optimization of wind energy application. Um, operation and maintenance and installation will be also very crucial, li as lifetime extension. And uh, sustainable wind farms by modeling wind farms impact on ecosystem, birds impact, mitigation and prevention, and also natural inclusive, inclusive design. Uh, so very important will be the site allocation and the activity also uh, taking into consideration the public acceptance uh, by developing tools and practice for stakeholders, maps, increasing public dialogue and enhancing social acceptance. Finally, uh, the hybridization uh, and integration uh, will be very um, important and mess most of the uh, agency that support the uh, um, transition initiatives to have found it as uh, one of the main uh, points to address during this uh, call uh, and uh, is related to site system and technology integration of co-located renewable energy um, source and technology onshore or offshore um, integration with storage and power to x hybrid system combined electricity generation with it or other energy carrier in hybrid system. So we also look for the combined combination of production of electricity with heat or with um, energy carriers like chemical uh, hydrogen, uh, uh, methane and so on. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, I will go uh, to... Um, Sorry, Francesco, may I... May I uh, we yes, have this is a double. Uh, I will go to uh, the end of my uh, presentation. Increase the energy conversion and efficiency. Well, no, sorry, please uh, come back to the... Um, contribute to zero emission power production. Increase technology performance and our lifetime. Increase system efficiency, decrease investment costs and COE, and improve economicity, so also by uh, multiple products, optimize and decrease costs by coupling different power production and contribute to the security of supply, combining different renewable energy sources. Also, sustainability aspects are very important by reducing environmental impact, minimize the critical material and extension of the lifetime or using circularity by design approach. And third, uh, last slide, please. Um, we are looking for, as I said, uh, low TRL uh, project in the uh, call module 03A, so TRL between 3 and 5 with starting TRL to um, 3 or higher, and end of project the TRL need to be uh, at least 4 or higher, and uh, 03B with innovation-oriented action with TRL 5 to 6, so Projects need to start at TRL 5 and then at TRL 6 or higher. The project budget will be at least 1 to million for the 3A and 2.55 million for the 3B. So, uh, of course, the specific requirement for the innovation oriented action will be at least one industrial partner, so one private for profit companies. And that's all for my side. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That's cool. Uh, then we'll on to the next uh, call module, Lena Hook, would you, from TRI3, would you like to get yes, stage? Yes, of course. Okay. My name is Lena Hook. I work at the Agency for Renewable Resources, and I will tell you all about Cal Module 4, which is carbon capture, utilization, and storage. Next slide, please. So what are we looking for? Overall, we are looking for research and innovation projects focusing on accelerating CCUS technology, and which is of key importance is that funded projects must advance the state of the art for CCU, CCS technologies and contribute to new knowledge and competence that bring CCU, CCS closer to commercialization. So that's what we're looking for specifically. Next slide, please. So CCUS uh, is CO2 capture from point source or direct from air. We also deal with transport, capture CO2, and um, storing the CO2 in geological formations or using CO2 to produce value products. Next slide, please. So targeted topics that we're dealing with in this cold module is CO2 capture from energy intensive industry, advancing lower cost CO2 capture technologies, um, CO2 transport and storage infrastructures and developing commercial CO2 storage size. Uh, those are kind of the key topics we're, we're um, covering. Next slide, please. 
overall, the requirements we have is that projects need to end at tier L5 or higher. If activities at activities at lower tier L level may be included if they contribute to the higher tier L goal overall of the project, so that's fine, but ideally tier L5 or higher. We require active industrial involvement in research and innovation activities. Um, also applied funding from the call in the range of, but not limited to one to four million. So that's all kind of um, the, the range that we're dealing with here. And one thing that I really want to stress is that you need to make sure that your application meets national eligibility criteria because each partner will be funded by their, their home country. And it's really of key importance that you check whenever what you're planning in your project is eligible. And all this information is always published on our website. So make sure to, to really have a very detailed read here. Next slide, please. I was fast, so now I can have a coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lena. That was perfect. We'll take five minutes uh, now. Uh, so anybody who needs to take a quick break, uh, we'll see you back in the next will be three minutes after uh, 11. So see you soon.
Okay. <clears throat> And according to my clock now, it's 11.03. I hope some of you had a chance to take a stretch maybe a little bit or, or grab a cup of coffee. Uh, and we have so far been able to hear about the knowledge community impact call as well as our first four call modules. You've, uh, you've met TRI 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so now we're going to continue. And you will we, we will be continuing with TRI 3 and call module 4. So, Isabella Cabrita, would you like to take the stage? Yes, thank you. Uh, you're hearing me well. So, I'm working uh, with the Portuguese uh, Science and Technology Foundation. Next slide, please. And um, so, I'll be presenting the call module five, which focuses on hydrogen and renewable fuels technologies. So, uh, funding is considered for a broad spectrum of activities in this call from applied research to innovation projects, targeting the development and implementation of technologies across the whole value chain regarding hydrogen and renewable fuels and this aims at accelerate the deployment of cost effective solutions which includes a broad spectrum of technology areas namely production of hydrogen renewable advanced fuels secure and safe hydrogen storage uh, using solid and liquid carriers the establishment of new infrastructures and also the end use technologies across different sectors. Next slide, please. In terms uh, uh, of topics, uh, uh, sorry, but there is, a, <laughs> I thought there was another slide, so I'll, uh, the previous slide probably. In terms of topics, it's important to say that we consider new and improved production processes new and adapted infrastructure for fuels distribution with different types of carriers in the case of hydrogen secure and safe fuel storage and new and adapted and used technologies for industrial residential and transport sectors next slide please Globally, uh, projects should aim at uh, TRL 5 or higher, but lower TRL activities may be included if they contribute to the global project to TRL 5 or above. Active industrial participation is required and at least one cross-cutting dimension should be included. Next slide, please. A list of cross-cutting issues to be considered uh, is added to the call. When designing the proposal, it's very important that you look into it. And we have uh, focused on technical aspects that could be taken, like digitalization, safety, materials, integration aspects or environmental considerations or other aspects related to societal acceptance, risk perception or other. At least one of these issues should be considered when designing the proposal. And with this, I, I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And we'll move the next TRI4 and uh, Gerdy uh, Breenrek, uh, who will be presenting call module six and seven. Gerdy, the floor is yours. If, if Gerdy is so, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry for uh, for just uh, the quick, um, yeah, well, the, the few moments that I wasn't there. 
Uh, hello to all of you. Uh, my name is Gerdy Breenbroek. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands Enterprise Agency and I'm the leading expert uh, of the TRI4 uh, on heating and cooling technologies. Next slide, please. Uh, this year we have two core modules for you, uh, one on heating and cooling technologies and one on geothermal energy technologies. Why are we working on heating and cooling as well, uh, at all? 50% um, of the energy demand in uh, Europe is for heating. And if we're looking at uh, the rate at which we succeed in, um, in establishing climate neutral heating for Europe, it lags behind uh, the rate at which we uh, succeed to go to uh, zero emissions power generation. Uh, so there's uh, work to do to uh, and innovations to be uh, are needed uh, to bring up the speed of uh, the application of uh, heating and cooling technologies, but also uh, increasing and making better, faster, uh, better suitable uh, the suite of uh, heating and cooling technologies that we have. Uh, so, the aim of uh, my transition initiative is to support, uh, uh, to provide enhanced and improved heating and cooling technologies and systems for all climate zones of Europe around 2030 for climate neutral Europe in 2050. And this is about better, cheaper and easier applicable uh, climate neutral heating and cooling technologies. The topic emphasizes market-driven innovation activities and aims of projects can be cost reductions, uh, increasing competitive market opportunities, increasing environmental protection, and innovations may also impact social acceptability, safety, circularity, critical raw materials challenges, and so on. Uh, if you're talking about, if you're asking about the scope, thank you very much. Uh, this core module has a very broad scope. It goes from heat and cold sources, and you can think there about uh, solar thermal energy. You can think about the energy that is in surface water, waste, uh, heat. Um, we are also covering thermal storage. It's a very, very important topic at the various scales, uh, at the seasonal scale, at the, uh, at the minute scale, uh, but also at the various temperatures for industrial use, for use in the built environment. Uh, very, very important to, uh, to, to enhance and improve those technologies. Uh, then also, uh, we will uh, have possibilities for projects that focus on networks uh, and conversion, uh, in particular heat pumps. Heat pumps for the various temperature levels that we have in industry. Uh, these, uh, but also the network technologies that connect the, the cities and the districts uh, with heating and cooling networks. Uh, innovations to make those better, safer, cheaper, environmentally friendlier are um, the scope of this core module. Uh, consult the call text for a detailed list of target topics, but uh, don't feel uh, limited by the topics that we're mentioning. Next slide, please. Uh, then some requirements and good advice. As many core modules, uh, you may start at the TRL3 or higher, so you may also start at the TRL7. A valid proof of concept is required, and you also need to explain uh, what you've done uh, to, uh, to make sure that you can, are ready for the next step. Industrial involvement in project activities is mandatory in our core module and uh, the indicative budget range uh, ranges from one and a half million to five million in funding. Uh, as was said before, uh, the good advice is on checking uh, if your funding organizations participate in the core module six and it's a plural because also the funding organizations of your partners need to participate in module six. Contact your funding organization to discuss your idea 
uh, just uh, as was said by other speakers, uh, rather contact one time too often than one time too few and uh, run the risk uh, of not getting through on things that you might have known if you had taken the phone or the email. Next slide is about uh, the core module number seven, uh, and I'll be uh, guiding you through that one as well. Uh, this is on geothermal energy technologies. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this encompasses all geothermal energy technologies uh, focusing on heating and cooling, but also focusing on power generation, focusing on thermal storage in the subsurface uh, and or co-production of minerals from geothermal resources. Uh, we're looking here at secure, sustainable, competitive and affordable geothermal technologies. Uh, the topic emphasizes market-driven innovation activities again, and uh, it won't uh, be uh, a surprise that we're also looking here at cost reductions or increasing competitive market opportunities or increasing environmental protection or better methodologies. And I'll get back to that uh, on the next slide. Uh, innovations also here may impact social acceptability, safety or circularity and or critical raw materials challenges. And let me point out that this is important uh, for the future of Europe to think about their critical raw materials and some geothermal energy technologies uh, have very little impact on uh, on uh, critical raw materials so can be applied uh, on much higher um, level than others uh, where we are challenged uh, with the critical raw materials problems. If we're talking about target topics, uh, we have three, uh, we, we encompass the whole chain of uh, uh, development and operation of geothermal projects. Uh, we're looking at methodologies, and that's where the methodologies come in uh, for exploitation of, uh, uh, sorry, exploration of the subsurface. Um, exploration methodologies, uh, we're looking at uh, ways to improve uh, our geothermal and uh, underground thermal energy storage uh, resource development. So that is about the wells, about the drilling, about the pumps, things like that. And we're looking uh, for um, proposals that look at uh, better ways to integrate geothermal energy into uh, the energy system. And also looking at, for example, the operation of uh, geothermal energy systems. Uh, that could be uh, about scaling, uh, but it, it, there are many topics that can be included here. And also here, consult a call text for uh, a detailed list of target topics. Then next slide, again, uh, the requirements and good advice. Uh, this is also, this is a copy of what we have in uh, the core module six, but it's a different topic. Um, we're starting uh, with the TRL4, but you can also start at significantly higher uh, TRLs. And as we are, uh, uh, that as marketability of the solutions is uh, one thing that we really underline. Uh, we encourage uh, also the projects that are at TRL 6, that project starts to, to apply, a uh, valid proof of concept and also uh, underpinning material that you are ready to take the next step is required. Also here, industrial involvement in the project activities is mandatory and uh, the indicative funding budget ranges uh, from one and a half million to five million per project, but doesn't preclude uh, support outside of this range. Also here, check if your funding organizations, plural, participate in the call module seven and contact your funding organizations to discuss your ideas uh, to make sure that you understand uh, that you're on the right track uh, with your uh, proposal. So I hope that we will see many 
good proposals that help us to realize that energy transition, that heat and cool transition uh, that we need to go through as Europe. Uh, and I wish you a lot of success uh, with your, uh, with your uh, initiatives. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gerdy. We will continue on to TRI 5 and call module 8. Uh, Tina Ringenson, uh, the floor is now yours. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, my name is Tina Ringenson and I will present call module 8, Integrated Regional Energy Systems. Next slide, please. Um, so, in this call module, we are really looking for projects that take their starting point in a challenge on the regional level for the energy transition in a particular region or like several different regions that are similar. And examples of such challenges can be, for example, to increase sustainability and circularity in the value change of renewables, increase the seasonal shift of renewable energy in the targeted region, increase resilience in the regional energy system, or to demonstrate and validate solutions to overcome energy poverty. We think that you yourselves know the best what challenges there are in the regions that you are working with, uh, but we do have additional examples in the call text. Um, you can also find or know such challenges uh, in uh, an existing plan or roadmap for uh, your region or for your country. Uh, because we see very positively on projects that connect with such plans. Uh, we are looking for uh, model system solutions that can be transferred to other regions that have similar challenges. And we are especially looking for projects in regions and sectors that have a high potential for improvement. Next slide, please. Um, so. Who, who should this be? Uh, who, who should be involved in these projects? Well, we are looking for a consortia of need owners in a shared geographical context. So this shared geographical context is what we mean when we say region. Um, and uh, this consortia should have the intention of developing regional system level solutions uh, for the energy transition. Um, ideally, this should involve some kind of public bodies like municipalities, local and regional governments, um, private for profit companies are very important, but we uh, also like innovation clusters, living labs, uh, infrastructure providers and operators in these regions, um, secondary and higher education establishments like universities, uh, research organizations, etc. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah, okay, that was all. Uh, but you can read uh, the details when it comes to um, technological development levels. Um, and uh, yeah, all, all of the details of this call module uh, on the website. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And then we'll move on to the next speaker uh, from TRI 6, uh, where we are focusing on COM module 9. Osa Barrios Renswijk, if you'd like to take the stage. Thank you. And hello, everybody. Uh, I will introduce you to COM module 9 Integrated Industrial Energy Systems. And uh, we are, thank you. <laughs> Uh, we are focusing specifically on integrated solutions across industries, across energy sectors, and across public and private sectors. And we have uh, industrial transformation toward, towards en energy efficiency, renewables, and digitalization. And we are also looking into CO2 capture and utilization for long uh, term storage and product uh, recreation. Um, we have also a special emphasis in place on solutions for system and process level integrations for efficient industrial power heating and cooling. 
um, we have a highlight uh, in the role of hydrogen and its potential to drive sustainable industrial transitions. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, if you look at the core module nine overview, uh, we have a project start at TRL of three or higher, and the end should be around TRL eight or lower. Uh, and we have applied funding from the call in the range of 1.5 to 5 million. And there is also specific requirements. At least one industrial end user must participate in the project uh, consortium. And of course, uh, there is a consortium partners. Uh, we have uh, from secondary and higher education establishments, uh, research organizations, uh, private uh, for profit companies and public bodies. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we have looking at challenges for core module nine, and uh, they are reducing emissions from the industrial energy system and also integrating energy and resource efficient industrial energy systems. And the third is uh, removing carbon emissions from the carbon cycle in industrial energy systems. And if we look uh, in, in the, some uh, example for target topics, it could be a support uh, of a wide use of renewables and alternative energy sources, as well as emission control technologies for reducing industrial emissions. Uh, or there could be increased resource and energy efficiency of industrial energy systems through novel process and system integration. Uh, another topic could be increased circularity through, for example, CCU or the reuse of waste heat. Or you could also look into increase uh, the use of bio CCUS in industrial processes. Uh, develop sustainable, sustainable bioenergy and biofuels, or develop and integrate hydrogen-based technologies into the industrial energy system and the infrastructures. Uh, this is some examples, and as uh, other um, speakers men mentioned, you can get more details in the core text. Uh, next slide, please. So I will finalize with the TRS-6 National Funders Map for 2024 and uh, Core Module 9. And these are the countries that are funding Core Module 9 for the this joint call. And uh, uh, this is a good way that you can find uh, uh, partners in different countries and also uh, uh, I will remind you like uh, the previous speakers that you need to check your national uh, eligibility criteria for different funders. Um, I can also mention that the, this uh, uh, core module aims to support projects so they can lead to faster market update or upscaling. And uh, usually the main industries that are considerate uh, not must be, but are uh, iron and steel, cement, pulp and paper, chemical, and food and beverage industries. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Ulsa. Then we will go on to TRI 7 and our final call module, number 10, Thomas Biel. Uh, the floor is yours. Hello everybody, I'm Thomas and uh, the representative of TIS 7 which is about clean energy integration in the built environment. Uh, next slide, please. So, where are we? We are, let's say, an interface between uh, single technologies, which might be developing the transition initiatives number two and four, and uh, area concepts uh, which can be found in transition initiative number five. So we are really focusing on the integration of different kinds of technology solutions into buildings. 
Next slide, please. Uh, to go a bit more into detail, um, your projects uh, should aim to enable existing and new buildings to function as active components within the energy system. So far, most of the buildings are only consuming energy. And uh, we are really focusing to uh, make them active players within the overall energy system, if it's electricity or heat. Um, we are focusing on all kinds of buildings. So it can be residential, non-residential, uh, public and commercial buildings, so really everything um, you might be interested in would be possible and fit into call module number 10. Um, and as I already mentioned, the overall goal is really to empower buildings to actively contribute um, to the energy system. The next slide, please. What we did, uh, we've identified three challenges. Um, you don't need to tackle all of them, but uh, just one uh, would be already fine to um, to come up with a project on for Core Module 10. So challenge one is really the transformation of buildings and the built environment to an active part in the energy system. Challenge two would be uh, the digitalization of the whole life cycle of a building. So you can come up with software solutions when it's about uh, which can contribute to the planning phase or maybe even uh, when it's about uh, dismantling and recycling of, uh, of buildings. And then the challenge three is quite new and um, it's about new concepts and technologies to renovate and refurbish the built environment. Um, as most of you might know, um, we are lacking behind uh, renovation rates in nearly every country. So we are by far not at the point uh, where we should be. And the next slide, please. And then I will already come to an end. So um, our requirements for the call module number 10 are similar to most of the others. So your project uh, should have an tier of three or higher when you are starting. And uh, we are looking for a TL of five or more at the end of your, your project. Um, we don't have uh, any specific or commodal specific requirements, so you can stick to the uh, overall ones which are mentioned in the core text. And uh, we are really looking for consortia with partners from the energy building and the construction community. And actually, uh, we would hope for more participants from the construction community because this is uh, what we are a little bit lacking so far. Uh, that's it already from my side. I kept it short and uh, would, Perfect. would Thank you. go Thank you. to Christina. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Now we're back on time. Thank you very much. We'll go on to the next. Uh, so now everyone, we've seen the different call modules. Uh, so the next section, we'll be looking at the submission pack platform and how we um, and, and how that works when you want to apply. And so I would like to ask uh, Rachela Mosia, please to come to the stage. Hello, hi, good morning, everybody. I'll try to walk you through the submission system. Uh, indeed, for those of you who already participated in a previous call, there is very little new, but uh, anyhow, it is worth uh, to have a walk through the submission system just to refresh your memory. Uh, the next slide, please. Next. Uh, the uh, submission system, you see the entry page, uh, you can access uh, from the ctpartnership.eu general website, otherwise uh, you can uh, browse directly the ctp-submission.moore.gov.et uh, just to go directly to the submission system. Uh, how to start your proposal? First, log in to the submission system, click, please go to next, I will say click uh, to ask Okay, um, the first things to do uh, is, of course, uh, to sign in 
uh, um, in case uh, you are already registered to the platform for having participated in the previous call. If you're, if you're new, please register. Click on the register at the top of the uh, at the top at the bottom of the form and uh, fill in as requested by the form with your contact details. Uh, you had to register as a new account and please uh, be sure to have access to your email box because you will receive an email to verify your account and beware because the validation link expires in 15 minutes. Uh, if you just miss this validation link, you don't find your email or whatever, uh, don't panic. Just go back to the, log to the sign in and click again on sign in. Do not register again, please. Just sign in, a new, valid a new email will be sent to you. Click. Okay, when you sign in, you will access the general entry page where you find listed all the active and closed call. Choose the one of your interest, hopefully the CTP 2024 call. Click. And um, open a new application. Click. Okay, so you can either add a new proposal uh, by selecting the add button or if you have been invited to a proposal or you are a coordinator of different proposal, just select the one in progress. Click. Uh, you can always uh, delete your proposal uh, if you change your mind, but to open and edit your proposal, just click on the I icon. Click. Uh, click. So, uh, in order to start a new proposal by clicking the add button, you will have to fill in this basic form with uh, uh, general information about your project, uh, the short, uh, the acronym, the project title, and uh, the call module you are applying for. Click. Uh, this is particularly relevant because this is an information you uh, cannot change and it is mandatory. Uh, when, once uh, you have started your proposal, uh, you will access the dashboard and with the general detail of your proposal, you see the call identifier. In this case, as an example, is a, a CTP 2024-0008 and uh, you will see also the um, tracking details of your proposal the system tracks the exact moment you start the uh, the the project the proposal on the submission system uh, the last dated and so on so those information are updated in real time anytime you access your proposal click and this is uh, a detail of the dashboard uh, from the coordinator point of view click there are two main sections to be filled out. Uh, the project data, uh, which are to be, this section is to be filled by the coordinator only, while the partner data um, have to be filled by all the partners. Uh, click. So, uh, as you have heard, there are some uh, basic eligibility criteria, meaning that a project proposal should, uh, should include uh, at least uh, three eligible partners. This means that you have to invite your partners to, to the submission uh, system. Click, please. In the dashboard, you see the invite partner button. Click. And a form will, will open up to invite a partner, just fill in with the uh, name and surname and the uh, email of the invited partner. Uh, all project partners shall accept your invitation in order to be listed in your project proposal. Click. In your dashboard, you will you can monitor anytime what is the status of this invitation and the status of the uh, completion of the information about 
all partners, including you, the coordinator. Uh, you will see uh, listed all the partners with their respective role, coordinator or the partner. Uh, under the status column, you will see in progress, for, uh, for example, because the uh, proposal is being in progress and data are being filled out. If you see the status, Pending. This means that the invitation still has to be accepted by the partner. Click. In case uh, you change your mind, you don't want to have this partner anymore, or he, uh, he has declined uh, and informed you uh, via email, for example, not on the platform, you can delete this partner anytime. And as a coordinator, once the partner have accepted to your invitation, uh, you can also fill in the organization detail on their behalf. Click. Uh, from the invited partner's point of view, what it happens? Uh, the invited partner will receive an email uh, with the invitation to uh, link to the uh, um, submission platform. Of course, any partners have to register or sign in so according to uh, according to the fact if they have already an account registered or not click uh, please uh, announce that uh, this system email is generated by the system so you will receive this by no reply at uh, chineca.com so, in case you don't receive it, uh, please check in your spam box and enable emails from this account. Click. Okay, uh, you can accept or decline uh, the invitation as a partner. You can accept or decline uh, in the platform. Click. So, when you access the platform as an invited partner, uh, click please. You uh, will see this icon, the, the bell icon with a red dot. This means that you have a notification there. Click. In this case, uh, it says that you have received an invitation. Click. That you have to accept or decline or just to uh, postpone uh, your decision to a later stage. Uh, click, please. And uh, Going back to the proposal, uh, as a coordinator, you have to fill all the basic information about uh, your project proposal. Uh, click the project data, click. Okay, uh, click uh, at least four times, please. Okay, so the first section. Uh, it's related to the project data. There are some um, subsection to be filled in, uh, but uh, you will find already recalled by the system uh, the project acronym and the title because you already uh, filled in when starting your proposal. Uh, but there are other sections to be, in, uh, to be filled in, in particular the project contact, uh, so the person that the CTP partnership can use uh, as a reference contact for administrative uh, details and whatever it can be or cannot be the principal investigator that that is up to you entirely up to you uh, you had to indicate what is the call module upload a project description fill in the do not significant harm section which is mandatory for all uh, projects dealing with energy technologies and add this additional partner information this means uh, basic information regarding the role of the partner in your proposal uh, next please It is important that you save, click the save button that you find at the bottom of any form for any section. Please, uh, next. You can go back to the dashboard anytime or across the sidebar, and you can navigate through the various sections or subsections without any particular order. So you can switch from project data to organization data and so on. The important is that you save any change you make. Please, uh, next. Uh, okay. Regarding the uh, partner data, uh, it is important to highlight that uh, you need to um, have a PIC, a PIC number, which is provided by the European Commission. Uh, this is mandatory. 
And uh, once uh, you uh, fill in your uh, PIC number and click save, you will, the system will retrieve basic information from the funding attenders portal. Uh, so sparing you uh, the, the effort of filling in all the fields. Uh, click please. Um, of course, uh, all partners have need to have this pick, uh, including the international partners from so also the partners from third countries. Uh, please be sure that your invited partner are registered on the funding and tender portals and have a valid PIC number. Anyhow, they can register anytime. Uh, the overall process takes five minutes. So you can accept those partners only if they have a PIC number. There are some other mandatory fields because those are required by the, e the European Commission uh, and uh, it is the VAT or alternatively the registration, the national registration number uh, for those um, uh, legal entities that doesn't have a, a VAT. Uh, and this is mandatory as well as the NACE code. This is a statistical code for the classification of the uh, sector of activity of your organization. If you don't know uh, the NACE code, um, you find in the submission system the link to access uh, the guide uh, on the uh, commission portal. Uh, the next, please. And finally, I want to highlight this last section, um, the team members. Uh, you can already uh, list what are your team members. This means other researchers involved in, the, in your project proposal for any partner. This is referred to any partner, the coordinators and the, and the co-applicants, uh, provided that you already know their identity, you already know who they are. Um, Next, please. You have to list uh, here only researchers, uh, not other profiles uh, who can contribute to the proposal, but that are not researchers, uh, because these data are required for statistical purposes by the European Commission, uh, and uh, uh, so are mandatory. Uh, will be mandatory in the full proposal stage, but are not mandatory at the pre-proposal stage. Um, there are some fields to be filled in in case uh, you know who are your team members. Uh, please scroll to the right of the toolbar in order to um, to go to the uh, to all the fields. Uh, next, please. And you see there are all those information uh, are mandatory because are for statistical purposes, as I said before. The next, please. Uh, once you have filled in with all the with all the information required, please save. Uh, in case you change your mind, you can always delete. Um, you can add uh, new um, team members by clicking on add. Next, please. Next, please. But if you don't know your team members, the identity of your uh, future team members at this stage, just click on to be determined and don't fill in any other field um, in case. And I, I wish that happens for uh, all of you. You are invited for a full proposal. You will submit this information at this stage. Next, please. The final step is the validation and submission. Once uh, you have filled in with all the information required, that you have uploaded your um, project description, uh, you can make uh, a check uh, regarding uh, the completeness of your application. Next, please. You can identify if there are missing fields by clicking on this specific button. Next, please. And the system will I will highlight all the missing information. In this case, there are a lot because I didn't fill in this fake uh, example um, project proposal. The next, please. You can also check if your project proposal meets all the constraints, meaning the basic eligibility criteria which have been defined at the CT partnership level by clicking on this button. Next, please. Click. 
and you will receive a message, a warning message, in case some of the constraints have not been uh, matched. In, in this case, for example, I didn't match the call module with the transition initiative, which is uh, corresponding to, and uh, uh, the proposal uh, lack of the uh, three partners which are necessary uh, for the proposal to be eligible. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, you can download a preview, a PDF of all the system data that you have submitted at any time. Next, please. And once everything is okay for you and for the submission system as well, you can finally submit the project proposal. Uh, this button uh, is uh, actionable only when everything is ready and compliant with all the requirements. Next, please. Uh, please note that you can um, submit your proposal uh, iteratively until the call deadline, meaning the 21st of November at 2 p.m. And the system overrides all the previous submissions. Uh, the proposal uh, uh, remains in a draft status until you push uh, the submission button. And uh, but once it is submitted, you can revise it until the deadline as many times as you wish. Um, uh, and that's it. Next and final slide. In case you have some IT issues, because it can happen, no panic, just call the IT support and uh, refer to the various technical guidance that you find in the submission uh, system in the entry page, in particular the pre-proposal annotated template where you can find instruction uh, regarding the various fields, uh, information and data that are required, and the pre-proposal submission guidelines, which is the technical um, guidelines uh, to the submission system to the online procedure. Uh, if this doesn't answer your question, please call the IT support just fill in the form that uh, you find um, uh, at the bottom uh, of the uh, this entry page. Um, final final slide just to say you could Sorry, buy. I'm really short on time, so just final please. Thank yes, you. Yes, it's the final slide. If you can just go on to the last slide, please. I thank you for your attention and last warning, don't wait the last minute to submit. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Ricola. That was very clear. Uh, and uh, now we will go on to the next section where we are going to talk about how you can join the clean energy partnership, clean energy partnership community, and perhaps do a little matchmaking. Thomas uh, Rubenreiter, uh, you are welcome to the stage. <laughs> now you should hear me, I guess. Yes, we okay. hear you. Sorry for that. I didn't unmute myself. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for this opportunity to share my experience on how to use the matchmaking and event platform. Um, my name is Thomas Röbleit. I'm working for the Austrian Research Promotion Agency. And uh, yeah, since 20 years, and we are organizing a lot of these events. Um, yeah, and uh, the, the Clean Energy Transition Partnership provides a really great platform uh, to, to use it to enlarge your network and find, well, the needle in the haystack. Um, so why it is uh, incredible? Because there are more than 4,000 members registered so far, and you can uh, use the platform not just to present yourself, but also your collaboration wishes. So it is there to, to find potential project partners, uh, to uh, have a look at the collaboration opportunities for, for these joint calls, and uh, all the events and webinars will be provided there as well. So it's also for the future, uh, registration makes sense. Uh, next slide, please. Well, um, here are now some slides uh, how you can improve uh, um, your benefit for, uh, for uh, using um, um, using this, this this matchmaking platform. And the first advice I would like to give you is uh, present yourself. 
So uh, as you can see here on the right side, this is Manuel Schwabel. He presented himself uh, and the company best. And uh, you could see a, a photo of, of, of yourself will improve dramatically your, your your presence here on the platform. So this is the first tip I would like to give you. Upload a photo of yourself and also upload a logo of your organization. Um, then you also have the opportunity to, to insert an organization description. Some of you may think, well, that organization description is available on our website. So is it is it enough to just to copy the link of our website? No, it's not. Uh, because the reason is uh, the, uh, the the website offers a lot of filters and search opportunities, and if you do not uh, insert that information in the platform, it cannot be found by others who are looking, for example, for uh, biogas providers or biogas uh, networks um, if it's not available on the platform. Um, and um, as you can see, um, Manuel has provided uh, some marketplace opportunities. These are these three um, uh, uh, three profiles below. So this is something where you definitely can uh, can say, "Hey, I'm having a lot. Of, uh, I'm having an expertise. I'm having a service. I have a project idea." So just present yourself, and then others can find you. And don't just insert a title and then uh, um, also insert some um, some some information. So usually this this information is available on your website. Uh, so you have a perfect description of your product, your expertise, your services. Just copy and paste it uh, to uh, to this to this platform. <clears throat> it's it's not a big effort for you. Um, next slide, please. Well, and then it's about finding partners and and uh, finding partners is uh, you just browse uh, the participants or the marketplace opportunities. You will find these these points in the menu point matchmaking. And as you could see, uh, we have uh, we have the, the different call modules available and we have uh, countries available and you can uh, you can combine these these two filters. There is also a free text search available. Uh, so just have a look at in, uh, use it, and uh, yeah, find relevant partners. Next slide, please. Um, well, very important are the collaboration opportunities. Uh, so you can insert project cooperation or services offered, and this is an extra menu point. Uh, please use this menu point. Uh, so some. Just insert uh, the organization description, and um, this is uh, well. That's nice, uh, but this is exactly what you are offering. What you're unique, uh, and uh, and also if it, it, this this really makes sense, so to find the right partners, not to get let's say hundreds of expressions of interest, but to get for example five to ten, and half of them are really great for you. Um, next. Uh, slide, please. Yeah, uh, the next tip I would like to give you is request meetings. So, um, I have a lot of clients in the past. They say, okay, I would like to just get invitations, but, uh, you will, uh, you will lose a, a big opportunity. So, um, this, this means you, uh, there are. People inside the network who are available for a meeting. So these meetings uh, usually last uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on, on uh, uh, what, what is what is configured in the system. And uh, you you just click on it. Uh, you can see this this uh, this this green button, this green icon button, this plus button, and then the the, the person is available. Uh, you should also check if you are available for B2B meetings. So there is this availability. Uh, you see for uh, for the, today, the afternoon, um, this this picture in the middle uh, uh, on, on the bottom, um, you have to activate the checkbox and then in these slots, you will be available and the system automatically recognize that. So um, when, when I'm asking a meeting, the other person has to accept it. Um, and it's always better if you give the person a good reason to accept the meeting. Therefore, we always recommend to use the messenger uh, to just send a 
one or two sentences why this meeting is important for you and why you would like to meet that person, and then um, people can, can accept it. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and um, if you get the meeting invitation, uh, please accept or reject it as soon as possible. All of us, we don't like to wait. Uh, this is something, it's, it's also not very polite if you just set, um, collect all, all the invitations then and, and, and then short before the event takes place, you then decide who would like to, to, uh, to, uh, to accept and who would like to reject. Um, so do it as soon as possible. Um, sometimes uh, members, they don't feel comfortable if they reject meeting, but that's fine. If, if the meeting, for what reason ever, does not make sense for you, please reject it. It's your time and it's also the time of your meeting partner. Um, and once again, uh, if it's not clear for you why well, the person makes sense, but it seems to me that it could be a, a, an interesting partner, use the messenger. Uh, the messenger is also an, 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 um, an instrument to um, build up a kind of uh, a first relationship so uh, that you maybe look forward to the meeting. This is, this is something then which, which pays off uh, later on. Uh, if there is a decision, okay, let's go for you or another one for, uh, for a specific proposal. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and uh, as, as the time for a meeting is limited, uh, so it's, it's always too short. So um, we, we had meetings uh, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and it's always too short. So just be aware about that. Uh, this, uh, this 20 minutes, uh, you, you're pitching uh, your collaboration with the other one, and then you maybe have a few minutes time to discuss the first and most important questions. But it's just if an if a second meeting makes sense or not. So this this is the the reason why this this is so short, and you have the possibility to to have a lot of meetings uh, uh, during a day or during an afternoon. So therefore, it's important to prepare your pitch. So uh, just to bring it to the point, um, tell the other what you would like to tell, and then have some minutes time to to clarify the most important issues to go for a next meeting or not. Uh, what is also important, uh, follow up in time. So, um, when, when I, uh, I, I also use that system, uh, for, for having meetings and meeting new clients. And, um, I always try to, uh, to use the last minute, um, to, um, uh, to, to agree on a follow up meeting and, and, and also to, um, to agree at, at times and, and then let's have another video call. So, because then if, if you do it later on, or the longer you wait, uh, well, the, uh, the long, uh, the, the more people will forget. And usually if you, if you do it, there, there are also scientific, uh, studies. If you do it as soon as possible, the better the chance that, uh, that you go on for a collaboration. Uh, I always recommend to, to exchange contact details then at the end of a meeting, um, just to, 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 to send over a short email, uh, with, uh, with your signature. So this is because if, even if you go up for a follow up meeting, you agree on it, uh, but something happens that 1 of, uh, of, of the meeting partners cannot attend. It's, it's possible to get a contact afterwards to each other. Next slide, please. Um, as mentioned, I'm working for the enterprise Europe network. Uh, so this is, this is the worldwide biggest support network for SMEs to internationalize and innovate. Uh, so we are about, um, about 450 organizations. Uh, usually these, are innovation agencies or chamber of commerce. And, uh, we support, uh, SMEs who are innovative and who would like to internationalize. So this is the same uh, um, target group as, as, as you have, um, and uh, we have a lot of partnering services. So if you um, if you have a look at uh, at the platform and you could not find the partner you need with with a specific expertise or with a specific profile or technology um, or service, 
then you can use the network and we uh, uh, we use our 450 partner my 2500 colleagues to find this needle in the haystack for you uh, we're quite successful in that um, so we have done that uh, for uh, for for three consortia for the last call um, where uh, partners had to be exchanged had to be uh, changed and uh, we found for for all of these three uh, uh, really great partners uh, to go on for a full proposal proposal. Um, so the, the network, the services are, are free of charge. Um, so beside these partnering services, we also have uh, consulting services about uh, sustainability, innovation management, dis business development and so on. Um, you can see also the uh, the link of the website of the Enterprise Europe Network. But if you have questions, uh, please feel free to get in contact with me. Or if you're not sure who you would like to contact, who should be contacted, uh, just let me know and I will introduce you to the right colleague in your region. Well, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thomas. That was very good. I hope that people are in contact and that you join the community. Anyone that would like, just, uh, just take the opportunity to join our community. So now we'll go on to the question and answer session. Uh, we have about 15 minutes to look at the, the questions you've su submitted on Slido. Uh, and so I think if someone can share the, the Slido um, page, we'll start, we'll jump in to, to answer some of these questions. I'd like to invite um, co-management to come up and, and help me with some of these questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, here. Let's see. Yeah. We have. Oh, sorry, we need to get back to Slido. You're here. Oh, okay, so we'll just take the first question then. Uh, okay, different countries seem to have different funding budgets. Uh, yeah, it, and it has to do with a, if you get a good score, but there's a small budget in one country. Jacob, can you give a little perspective on this, how selection happens with us? I can do that. So, yes, Sarah, you're absolutely correct that there are some countries with a higher budget than others. So, this is where we have the European Commission that comes in with top of funding. So, the European Commission provides us with the extra funding so we can fund even more projects, and especially for those countries who are especially popular at times. So let's say they have a budget of 1 million that they potentially can actually fund projects up to 2 million uh, euros in total uh, because of this type of funding from the EC. However, that type of funding does also run out of uh, money at some point, and there we have to make a cutoff um, for the projects uh, in that call module. So that may, could be either a score, total score 13, but it could also be a total score of 11, uh, that's depending on the success rate of, uh, of the, the call module. Yeah. Perfect. I and I just, that was a good answer. And I think we have also another question for you here. Uh, I missed the, the first question, which is about when you have like partners from five different countries and application wise, how many applications uh, will they have to submit potentially? Um, so, so first of all, they have to submit the central one. So they have to submit the one to the to us in the CTP platform that the Rakile was so kind to to show to you. But then some of the funding agencies might also have national requirements that state that they need to hand in a submission there. So that means, and that can vary from funding agency to funding agency, what should be included in, in the national uh, application. For some, it's just that they have to basically copy paste what has been written in the central one. For others, they have to make a justification to how it, uh, it, the project contributes to their national uh, for, uh, energy and research goals as well. But uh, yeah. Great. Um, let's see. If we go on to the next questions. Okay, we'll, we'll talk the ones that have highly, been highly ranked. Uh, if the funding rate is below 100%, how do we know how we can? 100% with the, the, the what, what do they have to contribute? Uh, and I, I imagine this depends, doesn't it, on the country? Or? So I'm not sure if I quite understand that question uh, in kind of hours uh, or yeah. cash needed. Uh, okay, funding rate is below. 
Uh, so that depends on the national uh, funding agency. So you need to contact uh, each uh, national funding agency uh, to hear what is their in-kind demands and so on. That we cannot answer from, from a central point of view. If your funding agency is here today and have the national breakout session, you can also ask them there today. Ask them there directly. Uh, let's take the next one about, and this is uh, about session, yes. uh, this enterprise. So, or other partners. Yes. Yeah, so the Scottish Enterprise is the only UK funding partner, uh, and uh, they only finance uh, partners that are located in uh, Scotland. So for everybody else located in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, they have to be self-financed partners. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless they can find another funding agency out there that is willing to, to fund them, but uh, so far we have not seen any funding agencies that are willing to fund outside their own national or regional boundaries. So. And so then the next question is when there are uh, multiple partners from one country and also multiple funding agencies. Can one partner apply to one funding agency, another partner to it? So you have uh, Yes, so, so how you apply is completely up to you. You just need to make sure that there needs to be at least three uh, partners from three different countries that they are applying. So if you, let's say, for instance, in Denmark, there are two funding agencies, and if you have uh, three uh, partners, two of them applies for the innovation fund and one for the EU DP, it still only counts as one country, but the, how they, uh, you apply is uh, completely up to you. Uh, I know that it can have something to do with the TIL levels as well, uh, so yeah. So look at the, that and contact the funding agencies if you're not sure exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's good. How about the next question? There we have a, a date question about the second stage two. Uh, if it was the 31st or the 2nd of April? Yeah, so I believe that it has been moved to the 2nd of April and we know that there has been some confusion regarding this and we apologize for this. Uh, what is stated in the call text uh, is of course the correct date. Uh, so apologies for that. Okay. And now we have a, a uh, it's a call module question. Uh, uh, what are the guys with respect? Okay. Uh, so it says this so, in here. So, so in regards to this, it is that uh, the general projects, for instance, in uh, call module nine, they should start at TIL le level three, but I do believe that all call modules allow for some of the tasks to be a lower TIL uh, or higher TIL. So, so therefore you can mix and match a little bit, but please look at the task, have a conversation with the, with the TI responsible for the call module. And again, also with the, with the national funding agencies uh, regarding their national funding rules. Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, here, let's see. Um, we have another one. Uh, we have a project proposal developing fuel cells. Oh, here we go. I think this was maybe for Isabel yeah. uh, then, yeah. uh, because it's called module five. I will let Isabel uh, maybe answer I that. <laughs> yeah, so invite Isabel to the stage, please. Uh, uh, so there's a, a... I'm trying to read, so yes. Uh, okay. So... Would, 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 would you like me to read it out loud, perhaps? Uh, the application will run on hydrogen, but the main outcome in the project will not be about the production or storage process for hydrogen, although these will be addressed as subtopics. And can it fall into the call module? No, no, it, it is eligible in terms of uh, call five because this is one of uh, the applications. I mean, it's a end use technology, so uh, it's it's perfect. And we have we have already an example on a fuel cell application. So go ahead. Anyway, if there are further questions about this, they always can contact me. That's okay. Yeah, please. Perfect. Uh, then we'll go on to the next question. Uh, will there be a list of participants from this event, including a link to the respective units in order to get an overview of who is interested in the call and the respective organization as a part of the existing network? Um, I, uh, the, in terms of the list of who's participated, we do have our community otherwise. Uh, I'm not, uh, maybe Ranghild, 
for your what do you I don't think we had plans to share the, the list necessarily. Oh, I think for GDPR reasons we are not gonna share yeah. the list. Again, for those who are interested, we encourage you to sign up to the B2 Match platform and there you will also be able to 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 find people who are interested, of course, then uh but yeah, we are not gonna share the list for GDPR reasons. No. Yeah. Great. So we'll take the next one. To which extent can investments into building up a demonstrator technology be covered? Um, that's a, uh, let's see. I wonder if that's maybe also depends on the uh, on the national. Yeah, uh, again, agencies. that uh, yeah. uh, depends on the national funding agencies, uh, as you as you might understand by now, and we are really encourage you to contact the national funding agencies. <coughs> Sorry, there's a lot of these financial questions that yeah. you need to discuss with the, with the national funding agencies as the actual financial uh, contracts are are negotiated with the funding agencies themselves and not uh, centrally with the CTP. So they have some national rules, and of course, they will vary from country to country. Thank you. That will take just a couple more. We have maybe we'll do just a couple more questions. Uh, why have an eligibility check in the first stage when the criteria change until the full proposal and the partners are suddenly not eligible anymore? To me, at least at least four partners from Denmark in the previous call. Yes. It also happened uh, to partners in Spain. So, so the reason yeah. why we have two eligibility checks is that we, of course, can uh, rule out uh, those who are uh, ineligible uh, straight up at the pre-proposal stage, and then we have one again at the full proposal stage. The one at the full proposal st uh, stage are most often looking at the topic, so it no, it's not necessarily possible for all the funding agencies to make a clear determination of the eligibility from the pre-proposal stage because they need more information that is only later uh, handed in at the full proposal stage. Also, some of the national funding agencies only have the national uh, deadlines after uh, the full proposal stage. So let's say we close on the 2nd of April, then they have a national deadline, application deadline on the 5th of April. If the person or the partners do not hand in this national uh, application, they will be deemed ineligible at the full proposal stage, despite being eligible at the pre-proposal stage. Exactly. So, then we'll go on to, to another question here. Um, uh, we're recording the meeting. Yes, of course. So will we share it on YouTube or just for the participants? So, um, the, the, the video should be shared. Uh, I believe it will be shared on our B2Match platform, but this will be included in the follow-up email that is sent out to all the participants after the meeting. Yes, so it'll be shared with you. Also, we will have it on YouTube as well and link it there. Yes. Okay, perfect. Also on YouTube. Uh, so yes, you'll be able to watch it again. Um, so uh, CTP allows to submit a project previously submitted, uh, taking care of the. ESR findings. Um, so I'm not sure uh, what the ESR findings are, but what we can say is that you can, of course, not submit a project that has already been uh, done. So if you re-event a project and, and and so forth, of course, you can uh, submit it, but our evaluators will look into the innovation uh, levels of it to see if there's something new. Uh, yeah, okay. and then, of course, if you ha already have a project going on, if you then apply for CTP funding, you cannot apply for, for funding for the same task because that will be double funding and we do not allow this, especially with the EU related uh, funding. Can I just add you. that if it was not uh, funded, then you can, of course, resubmit and after taking care of the um, here we go. Uh, so then we have a, a project related to technologies uh, able to convert heat into electricity. Uh, thermoelectrics uh, can fall in uh, with any of the modules. Uh, okay. Uh, it, it certainly can. And this is a power technology, I would say, primarily. Uh, like, so to your, like the, 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 you're going to look at the, the ones under TRI too, and unless you're integrating it with a system. So I, I think it maybe depends. 
uh, but certainly uh, I think uh, Francesco would be someone that would be good to contact with regards to uh, to this question. Uh, then let's see when will each country's participation or not in the, each module be finalized, Jaco? Uh, so this uh, should be finalized before we officially open the poll uh, on Thursday. We know that in the case of Israel, there is some delay in their national budget, so therefore their participation will be, uh, but the actual funding amount will uh, only come in later. We, of course, apologize for this, but this is an extraordinary case of a delayed budget uh, uh, for this year. That's great. And I have some time. I just, sorry, Christina. I'm just yeah. thinking that we maybe we should move over to the breakout sessions for the national yeah. team. And I just to inform you guys, these questions will be answered and delivered to you afterwards in the information email you will receive. So if you haven't gotten your questions answered, don't worry, we will have a thorough look at it. Perfect. Thank you, Ranghild. Then we'll go on to the next section where we're talking about the national requirements. And uh, if we take the next slide, we should be able to see uh, the Great. Let's see. I think everybody is coming back here uh, to the main session. Um, I hope that those, those of you uh, that were in the national requirements that they got to talk to the funding agencies uh, got some uh, good information and were able to ask some questions. Uh, so before we wrap up uh, the the event, we have uh, a little bit of information about upcoming events that we'd like to share with you. So as you, it's just the beginning now that we are launching the call, uh, but there will be more events uh, coming here. We have a question and answer session, for example, on the 23rd of October uh, that will, will be at 2 o'clock. So please, uh, for all of these events, please feel free to register at B2Match uh, so that you can uh, make sure you get uh, the um, invitations. Uh, then we have several thematic uh, information events. Uh, one about COM module one uh, for TI1 on the uh, that has two events on the 17th and 24th of September. Then we have one on uh, for COM module six and seven heating and cooling on the 19th of September. There's also a pitching and matchmaking session uh, for both validation and, and new project initiatives that'll be on the 2nd of uh, October. Uh, so there are also a, a number of national events in the Netherlands and Malta. Uh, if you are coming from those countries, uh, be sure to, to join those meetings on the 16th of September in the Netherlands and uh, the 3rd of October for, for Malta, these on, on, online events. Uh, so, oh, and of course, please do check uh, the, the community website, the BG Match, for more events. Uh, I think we'll go to the next slide. Uh, here. Another thing we would really love uh, to have you join is our annual conference uh, that will be on the 22nd to 23rd of October online. Uh, so I think you, uh, it'll be really uh, very interesting. Uh, so I really highly recommend those of you that have the opportunity to join uh, the annual conference. Um, and specifically at this conference, what we're going to be highlighting uh, is uh, we're going to have policy discussions on the latest EU uh, Net Zero Industry Act. Uh, as the well, uh, well as the role of uh, research and innovation. Um, then uh, we'll also be talking, you'll get to know some of the funded projects uh, and hear more from the knowledge community impact, essentially, at this conference. So, uh, I, this is just remember that uh, we would definitely like you to, to stay in con contact. You are able to reach us at of course, through the website or, or LinkedIn. We also have a YouTube channel uh, and uh, yeah, and be to match, of course, the community site. So please register there. Um, so um, let's see, I think that's a, that's about it. Here's the, here's the QR code for our community. Uh, and if you have any questions in terms of contacting us, you might, here's one last page. Uh, like when you have, when it comes to application questions, submission and evaluations in the calendar, that's call management and you'll find their, their email there. Uh, when it comes to the, like the topics, the modules, 
please uh, contact the different TRI offices essentially associated with your call module, the one that you're interested in. When it comes to specific requirements for funding, you definitely need to be in contact with your national funding agency. Please, we can't uh, emphasize this enough. Please be in contact with them. And uh, then, of course, uh, yeah, if you have questions about, you know, the matchmaking sites and, and our community sites, uh, please feel free to contact us um, at the matchmaking at ctppartnership.com or Dr. EU, excuse me. So, so those, um, those are some of the ways you can uh, keep in touch, essentially. And if we go to the next page, um, I just wanted to thank all of the speakers uh, that have made this event possible and thank all of you that have come uh, to join us to hear about the information for this year's call and, and the partnership itself. Uh, so we wish you all the best of luck, those of you that would like to apply, and we hope that we will be in touch uh, at future events. Uh, again, uh, looking forward to seeing you and hearing from you. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.